In this tutorial in the iCast mini series, we're going over camera settings and system settings on the iCast mini. Now, first to start, you're going to need the TV style remote that came with your camera. We're gonna go into the camera menu and we're gonna change a couple items that will help optimize your iCast mini tracking workflow. All right, first we're gonna go into menu and under exposure, you can see that we have it set to auto and the exposure compensation mode is on. Now for this particular set here, we found that when you have a dark background working with the Data Video 4K tracking PTZ cameras, that it's best to put the exposure compensation level lower. And if you have an evenly lit room where your, say your background is, is white or a lighter color, that having the exposure compensation at zero works better. Now for your particular environment, whether you're in a venue or a classroom or a conference room, you're going to need to adjust the exposure compensation levels to better fit your specific situation. Here we have the gain limit set to 10. However, you can set it higher. There will be some noise introduced, but it's all very manageable. We find that center works great for the exposure meter. And for DRC, which is dynamic range control, five works best, but again, you may want to see what higher or lower settings do for your specific situation. If these settings in the auto exposure mode don't work great for you, you can always go into the manual mode and adjust all the settings. This is shutter priority. This mode is aperture priority. This bright mode just makes everything bright. So say you're in a low lit area, that might be best. And then we're back in auto. Moving down to color, it's best to use a one push white balance setting on a white card that you have in your scene. You could also use settings like manual. You can go to variable or auto white balance. You can also do indoor, which obviously wouldn't work here. And then we have outdoor, one push. I already set it up and it works best. So what we're going to do is I have a setting here to go to preset four, which will take me to the white card. And you wanna zoom all the way in to your source of white. That could be a professional white card or another source of white. And then you're gonna to wanna to press enter on the remote control to start the one push setting that will start calculating. And when it's complete, you can back out of the menu. Under PTZ, this is a very important setting. For autofocus zone, it's best to have it in center. And for autofocus sensitivity, it's best to have it on normal. When you're done making changes to your camera settings, press menu to back out on the remotes. And then don't forget to go back to where you had your first preset, the frame where you wanna start your tracking and then you're going to want to save it again. Go to the camera submenu, and we're going to press store, and then we're going to press one. And we're going to save all of our settings on preset one. Now it's saved, so when you start tracking in your workflow and you have your tracking set to start on preset one, you won't lose all of your settings and go back to your prior settings. Now we can see in our camera menu here, we have white balance. We can adjust focus and the iris. We can put things into manual or auto. We can adjust the shutter speed. And then of course, on the right, we have our controls for the camera. So we could change the sensitivity to make it slower or faster. So as you can see, we can zoom in, use this virtual joystick to move the camera left, right, up and down. We can lock our settings by pressing this lock unlock icon, and that will not allow you to make any unwanted movements with the camera. Iris, we just set up automatic exposure with automatic exposure compensation mode, so we wanna leave that alone. And that covers the camera side. Moving on to the setup menu, we can set our language for the iCast Mini. We can change the output resolution here 
Here we have it at 2160p, which is 4K, at 29.97 frames per second. But we also have all of these other options for resolutions and frame rates. When you make your desired setting, press Apply, and the iCast Mini will reset and change the program output. Here is the network settings for the iCast Mini. We went over that in a previous tutorial. For connections. Here under camera settings, we can adjust the video format in the camera. We could also change the camera mirror mode, the joystick pan, and the joystick tilt. And these are relevant when you have an installation where you've mounted the 4K tracking PTZ camera upside down. And then you would have to change the horizontal and vertical axis of the image and your joystick movements to match the camera being upside down. On the second page of settings for the iCast Mini, you could see the current firmware version. You can enable or disable a screensaver and you can adjust the brightness of the LCD. When you've adjusted the brightness of the LCD to what you desire, press apply. See now it's a bit lower. I think I want a little higher. In the next tutorial, we will go over how to connect a laptop to the UVC output of the iCast Mini, which will work the same as a USB-C output. And from there, you can output video from your iCast Mini to your laptop to send out a stream via Zoom or Microsoft's Teams, video conferencing apps, or live stream to Facebook and YouTube.